right, 424. Let's sing and see if somebody comes and joins us. There's a call comes a ring or the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore verse 4 let us not grow weary in the work send the light send the light let us gather jewels for a crown above send the light send the light send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine from shore to shore send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine forevermore and hymn number 228 228 we'll sing my faith has found a resting place after we Ask the Lord's blessings on our service. Man, it's different without with all the kids gone and everything, isn't it? And everyone, everyone gone. Trump family's in Florida on vacation. Pat and family are all over beach somewhere, Emerald Island. And um, Mark's homesick. Been sick for since he come back from camp, hadn't he? Getting better. Finally, getting better. So, hope, that's the plan. If not, if he's listening to while we stream this service, if he doesn't get better, we'll just have to shoot him. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Give, give, give someone to speak to and, uh, for the uh, afternoon service. Glad to have, I didn't say anything, but Kelly was here this morning with the new, new little baby. That baby, what's that baby weigh? Two pounds? <laughs> no, it's about six or seven, right? Seven? Wow. Even seven pounds look small compared to ones you guys are having. Right? So, wow. A lot of girls today, Miss Jean. Wow. That means it was a blessed church. It's good to have all these little girls, all of the Kellys, all of the Danleys. Whew. And uh, one, one, one poor little fellow there, Nathan there, <laughs> Nathan, all those girls. Anyways, I appreciate Steve driving the van home for the second service. That's how we decided to help out, and we'll pick up all, all the kids, and then mom and dad in their one vehicle, they can haul four of them, right? I think four, and we get the other six or seven on the. It's not only that they have their nine kids, it's that they have a couple uncles that are kids too, uh, an aunt and an uncle, Isabella's an aunt and Nathan's an uncle and they like to stay the weekend so you see where those good folks live, you can see where those kids enjoy it, they're way back up in that holler on Bob, Bob Bird Road and a uh, little single lane through the, for one mile back up in the very, Jackie you used to live back in the holler didn't you, see there's a blessedness to living back at the end isn't there, I guess. Is it true you used to walk to Spanishburg School? Really? The kids think they have it tough today if the bus can't come right up their doorstep, huh? Need it. You know one of the crazy things I did once is I walked your route to that school. Paul Cochran told me he was talking all about it, and so I walked that stream, I came out of that holler from Paul's house, and I walked and followed the stream and went down the waterfall and uh, went and walked to the school. I can't believe you walked at the school every day in the wintertime. Anyways, uh, I think Paul told me that when that waterfall would freeze up, that they'd slide down that thing. I said, you must have been nuts. Anyways. 
So you're one person that can truly say, I used to walk to school five miles uphill both ways, right? <laughs> Through the wood. Let's have a word of prayer and come to the message this morning. The song and message. Holy Father, thank you for this day and for each and every one of us in the Lord's house today. We're blessed by having all the kids. We pray that we allow the little children to come unto you in a special way. May all of them be saved. May all of them know you. And dear Father, may the next generation serve you, Lord, we pray in your will. In Jesus' name, amen. And I forgot we threw on about six, six or seven or eight Adair kids on top of all that. That's a good pile of kids, isn't it? 228, how about we sing two verses of My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. <clears throat> Verse number one together. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Verse 3, for the last, verse 3. My heart is leaning on the word, the written word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name, salvation through His blood. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that He died for me. Thank you all, I appreciate it. Oh, that's nice. Appreciate it, Miss Nancy, going over the piano. Caleb is in week seven. We've got, I think, four or five more to go. Summer youth camp. Psalms 127. Big message, a little bit of time. Just a little bit of time. <clears throat> Psalms 127. I don't know if mom will be catching this message or not. She catches some of them. Some of them she tells me she catches. But uh, I I try and do what my mom says. I'm trying to do that. Man, I had in a week I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Tammy's family reunion. She said, I'm gonna go this time and prove to everybody there that she has a husband. <laughs> you know why? Because mom on the phone said now, you better spend as much time with your sweet little wife as you possibly can. So I, I'm working on this. Psalms 127. And no, I didn't ask her, who my, who's my sweet little wife? I didn't ask her that. Verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Worthwhile endeavor. See how roundabout way that we get to this, this point here. Do you notice that three times the word vain is used? At the end of verse 1, the watchman waketh but in vain. Beginning of verse 2, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. And I'm looking, oh, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. There we go. Anyways, I'll come back to it in just a moment. Ephesus, this is vanity. When I think of the word Ephesus, we use the power to produce, to be effective, or effectual. 
in theological terms, they talk about the efficacy of the scriptures, its power to produce. Remember in the t- book of Isaiah, Jesus, or the God speaking about how his word would go out and it would not return unto him void. There is a power to produce in the scriptures. Vain, the word vain, to be empty, worthless, no substance, of no value, of no importance. Ineffectual, petty, false, trifling, fruitless. Look at the comparison here. Except the Lord build a house. Hello, children here. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. A worthwhile endeavor. Serving the Lord is worthwhile. I'm backing up to the message from last week, coming in first, the second service. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, We can see that chapter 19 and 18 are connected by the use of the verses at the end. We realize that the parable Jesus gives is illustrating an answer to Peter's question. We've given all to follow you. What shall we get? Matthew 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone, you might say everyone that has followed the Lord in the regeneration, and everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my namesake, shall receive an hundredfold. And shall inherit an everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last. And last shall be first. In chapter 20 I go down to verse number 16. After Jesus gives the parable of the householder. And hiring laborers he says. So the last shall be first. And, and the first last. For many are called but few are chosen. Many are called. Some won't go at all. Those chosen. Well, you'll find those in the laborers in the field. I realize that in that parable, he's speaking about that the householder does right. The householder rewards or pays his servants. In that parable, I saw that. He's paying according as he said. He's going to do right by his, by his, by his servants. And I realize that there's some that complained about the pay of the others at the last hour who got, got their reward. Isn't it something that that's the one group that the only group in the parable that he made a contract or covenant with? I do see a likeness in the scriptures, and I could I say in a time frame that the Jews or the nation of Israel is under covenant of God. They're the first that are called, the first in Abraham that brings salvation in the world by faith. I, I see that the gospel goes out to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And he's spoken to us by his prophets you know, and what they brought to us. Israel, he'll do right by Israel. And make no mistake, he'll do exceedingly well by Israel. And you know what they inherit? Isaiah chapter 2, book of, uh, uh, book of Zechariah. You know what they inherit? They inherit to be the predominant nation in the kingdom of God. And all the other nations flow into it. They will be well rewarded. It pays to serve or be a labor of the Lord is what I'm going to say. Well, the apostles come next. The apostles, and we have the foundation of the church, the apostles, but they're Jews. And we see in the scriptures that the apostles, well, they find their name written in the, in the foundation stones of the holy city, the precious jewels. In this passage, Jesus said, each of the 12 apostles, you 12 of you are going to sit on the thrones of Israel. They will be ministers to the nation of Israel in the kingdom, and they will be testimony of the eternal city of God for all believers. They're well paid. But those that are last, and I know how in the scriptures, I can find three predominant scriptures talk about us in the last days. Scoffers shall come. 
in the last days, perilous times shall come. But about the laborers, maybe you might say the Gentiles or those who come in at the last hour, you know what's going to be unique? Somebody's going to be the last person in the world to be saved. Wonder who that person will be. And when heaven reigns eternal, will he be the one that said, whoo I made it. He was not in the sense that I, he did it, but I'm in by the grace of God, and I was last. But you know what I see in the scriptures? I see that the, the saints of God in the last days are the ones that get raptured out and are the first to see the rewards and the first to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I see those that are last that are first, and then I see in the progression of time that Israel, again, will have a time where they stand before the Lord, and they are reckoned for their works through the tribulation period. I just tell you, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And Israel gets its rise to its predominant kingdom in the millennial period. You know something? Let's go back to this. But it pays to serve the Lord, first or last. It pays to serve the Lord. Serving the Lord, he should now receive a blessing, not only in this life, the other gospel account says, but in the life come a hundredfold. Add to this point from Wico, from last week. We'll get paid more than we deserve. <laughs> because the good man in the house is the Lord. Malachi chapter 3. The last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. Verse number 13. Your words have been stout against me. Isn't it something how the last book of the Old Testament ends? It ends with the word. Look, just for curiosity in your Bible study, look at chapter 4. Look at that verse number 6. Look at the last words of verse number 6. With a curse. The last book of the Old Testament, the law, it ends with, with a curse. Do you know how the book, the last book, the last words of the New Testament end? Remember Revelation 22? And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. Is there a big difference? But look at the state and condition, of the sum of the statements. There's at least eight questions, a question in God's character and goodness in Malachi. Here's one of them, verse 13. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say... What have we spoken so much against thee? What did we say? That's like a kid. What did I say? Teacher cracks on out. I heard you back there, young man. What did I say? Well, what did we say? Here's what you said. You have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? That's what you said. You didn't realize what you was complaining about? Vain. Here's what it said. It's useless to serve God. What are we going to get for it? We've suffered, we've mourned, or we've, we've borne our cross. What do you think of that question? I was telling you, it is a great reward, and it's worth it to serve the Lord. Now, a hundredfold. God doesn't do anything. God doesn't have a plan or program that's useless with man. Genesis chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. I could quote it, but I want you to see something for Titus together. Genesis 1 said, big subject, come to a quick ending. And beginning, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. That means it's shapeless. We see in this passage, it's a watery matrix. He's going to move upon the face of the waters. He's going to separate waters. So it has without form and void. It's empty. Shapeless, it's empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, war, of the waters. Immediately there's an action, and God said, let there be light. Now there is light energy. We have photons that give us vision. It gives us the ability 
to things to be illuminated. There is light energy, but just the general word of, of light is energy, power. And God said, let there be, he brought it to life. Shapeless, empty material brought to life immediately by God speaking. I go to Hebrews chapter 11, when we have a great definition of faith, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. For by it, faith, we understand about something about creation. Hebrews 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Framed. Put in place. We'd say outline, but actually he built the structure. Framed is to, the word to build the structure. He framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. He took no materials and called it into being and framed it. That's Genesis 1 verse, verses 1 through 4. So here it is. Calls into existence out of nothing, the materials. By his word, he frames a structure to it. Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 17, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. What a way to end that declaration of eternity. Israel has a purpose. From the very beginning that he calls out Abraham, in thee shall all the nations of the world be blessed. Israel, you have a purpose. Watch verse 4, 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it, he created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is, and there is none else. Remember this great, great declaration. God called into existence the materials. He framed it into shape. And he did it for a purpose. He did it not to be useless. Evolution will teach you that for millions, if not billions of eons and ages, that this, this mass of material wandered around hopelessly in chaos and tooth and claw and running red and blood and destruction and death and disease. That's evolution. God from the very beginning said, I took nothing, called it in a business, and called it and framed it into shape because I had a plan. I formed it to be inhabited. I formed it not useless. Get an idea? The subject of this word vain or vanity or useless? Let's go a step farther. Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law, Deuteronomy 5, verse 11, is the same as what's in Exodus in giving Ten Commandments. When we come down to the third commandments, thou shalt not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain, uselessly, triviously, without meaning, without purpose. I believe that cursing and swearing is a vain use of the name of God. But I also believe that taking the name of Christianity and living worldly is also a useless name of the word of the name of God. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain making it without a purpose, making it useless, gives us an idea. That leads me back to this passage, which is just very simple. And I was thinking about this with some of the young folks wanting to dedicate their babies and their kids to the Lord. I don't know of anything hardly that's, that's better than that. In the Old Testament, I see that Hannah gave Samuel to be a service in the, service in the house of God. Uh, so I could go on with that, but Psalm chapter 20, 127, verse 1 through 3 in closing.
Lord, in faith. So by faith, I believe that God created the heavens and the earth. By his word, he framed it. I believe that. That's miraculous, that's supernatural, but I believe it. That's what faith is. Except the Lord build the house, they labored in vain or wasted time uselessly that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Do notice there's three of these things. It is vain for you to rise up early and sit up late and eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. It's the Lord who gives rest. And I didn't uh, this passage when it's connected to the house, it's connected to children, low children, heritage of the Lord. I realize this. If you want to have a place of comfort for your faith, the things that are mentioned, build a house. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. What profit of man if he should gain the whole world? Mark eight thirty six. And lose his own soul. We could all answer that. That'd be a useless life. Rich man who said, I've got so much goods, I'm going to have to build more barns and rent some more stores to bestow my stuff. And that night he meets the Lord with nothing. You would say, that was a useless, wasted life. Except the Lord build a house. What good would it be for a man, if prophet a man, if he gained the whole world and he'd lose his own children. You know, for years, Miss Willa May Homemaker wouldn't get saved for years. Bless her heart, another sweet saint in heaven. And she cried at her house and living room. She said, my daughter's lost. And I just can't bear the thought of her going to hell by herself. I finally was able to convince her, get saved and lead her to Christ, and that get saved and lead her to heaven. <laughs> right? Uh, but I can see that. I can see that sorrow. To gain, what if you could have every all the blessings you could possibly have, and go to heaven and your kids not be there? Except the Lord build a house. So there's something in the fabrication. And, you know, blessed is children are a heritage of the Lord. The word heritage comes in the scriptures as an inheritance or the gaining of the privileges or blessings of, a, of an heir. That is, that's a great gift. Children are God giving you a future, a continuance. God giving you something that comes from, no wonder, when he says so such, I said I couldn't hardly describe this, of such is the kingdom of heaven. Something about something about children touches on what God's got and gives to us. Except the Lord build a house. They labor uselessly that build it. I said I got that, started getting some of these thoughts about mowing the yard. And things, with all this rain, things have been growing pretty good this year, haven't they? Seems like, and you know, I like things neat and trim. And it frustrates me to death to mow the yard and the next day it looks long again. I'd like to at least see the lines for two days, wouldn't you? And it'd all be nice. If I'm going to weed eat, I sure don't want them dandelions popping up the very next morning. All fuzzed out. I just, just can't stand that, right? I want it to be worth something for a little while. Except the Lord build a house. All the labor we do to have a nice place to live and food on the table, all we do, if the Lord's not involved in the house, oh, it's going to be useless. They labor in vain to build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So we post someone to get up at 2 in the morning, you know, to take their watch. So this idea of watching and guarding, watching over this, do you realize that a reliance on this? Do you realize you can't watch your kid on every playground? You can't watch them walk every you can't watch them walk every hallway. You can't keep them from knocking their head or their eye into the window of the car or shutting their fingers in the door. You can't be there for every living second. You can't keep them from getting the flu. You can't keep them you can't keep them from getting an earache. You can't. 
did you realize you said, I'm going to guard him and I'm going to go to your mama bear with my claws out. Yeah, but unless you have the Lord's good providence, These are mag magnificent verses. I'm going to come back to this, the main thing here in a second, just a second. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. I'm going to just sit by their bedside. And I'm just going to be right here every living second, 24-7. Uh, First of all, you can't do it. Second of all, it's useless if you try. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. As much as I'd like to provide... I. Lord, if I could just have more, if I could just have more money, I'd help the kids with this, I'd help the kids with that, I'd, have, I'd take care of this, I'd take care of that. If I just had more money, I'm just saying this. It has dawned on me that I, maybe the Lord doesn't want me to destroy their faith and their trust and reliance on the Lord. Maybe the Lord wants, maybe he is working through them and for them in a certain purpose, and I'm not meant to give them every little living thing that I want them to have. That being said, if I could, I would. I'd like, I'd like to be a giver, wouldn't you? I'd rather give than not. But that being said, if I could give them everything possible they could, can't do it. You know who the great, and I got the words here. You know who the great plan, you know who has the master plans? God. You know who's the master protector instead of me being a watchman? God Almighty. You know who's the master provider? God Almighty. He has the plan and the purpose. He knew from the beginning, Jeremiah, from whom, see, I tied last week. I, I know the thoughts I have to you to give you expected in. I knew you in the womb before you was even out of the belly of your mother, and I had a plan for you. The master builder plan is God. The master protector is God. The master provider. You know what David would write late in his life? Later in his life, he'd write a blessed psalm. I have been old. I've been young and I'm yet old, and I've not seen God's seed forsaken nor his children begging bread. You know who the master provider is? God Almighty. So if I can have faith that God can frame the world with a purpose from the very beginning, I'm going to ask the Lord to give me faith to build my house. Provide for my house. Protect my house. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Uh, the best thing I can do is give that reliance on faith and transmit that faith that I have in God to the kids. Serve the Lord. It's a worthwhile endeavor. It's not a vain thing to serve the Lord. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, Solomon would write, and he would write, As a man under the sun, the preacher saith, huh, to labor, to work, to run the race, Vanity of vanity, it's all vain. That's chapter 1. Chapter 12, the last verse ends with, well, the last chapter ends now. Remember, they created in the days of thy youth. The last verse of that chapter, he says, here's the summation of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. He went from someone under the sun and said, this is all useless to someone. Under, it says, the most important thing is serve God. Keep his commandments big difference isn't it uh have faith there are some things that i realize oh man i'm just gonna have to trust the lord for this that's the best thing that can happen what's the best <laughs> I said before where's the safest place for for your life to be smack dab in the middle of god's will where's this where's the best place for your uh, family to be Right smack back dab in the middle of faith in God for a plan, for his plan, for his provision, for his protection. Let's close with a word of prayer. Got, got there. Holy Father, I ask for your blessings on the service. We trust in you. Help us, Lord. Have that faith in you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you.